timer set up. Okay, let's find a place our feet together. In the first few moments, relax the weight shift forward and back. Try to feel yourself heavy, relaxing into the floor. Good. Settle to the middle of your feet. Bringing the hands to the top of the head. And let's start with hip circles. In nice, slow circles, take your time for the first few. See how your back and hips are feeling. Good. As you relax and things begin to loosen, you can make the circles a little bit larger. Two more. Last one, very nice. And again, coming back to being still and roll in the other direction. Again, start with nice small circles. There's a part of your body that feels tighter than the rest. Take your time, gently rolling through it. Slowly increasing the amplitude. The circle's getting wider and wider. Two more. And last one. Excellent. Hands to the hips. Step out to the side. With the feet a little wide in the shoulder width, drawing the belly to the back. And watching me first, as I lean forward, I want to rotate from the hips, keeping my back straight. That way, as I lift up, I'm lifting all the weight from my head to my hips from my pelvis. So make sure I'm lifting from that quad, from that inguinal groove, okay? Let's give that a try, and forward. Good, pelvis rolls forward as we lift up. Very nice, and continue. Try not to sink too far into your heels. Keep the weight in the mid to front of the foot. If you want more of a challenge, you can bring the hands to the center of the chest. For more of a challenge still, you can bring the hands behind the ears. Again, focusing to make sure that back is straight and all the weight is being lifted from those hips. Two more. Very nice. Hands on the hips, do the same start. So drawing forward as we raise up, we're going to turn and look at the ceiling. And, and begin. One. Two more. Last one. Very nice, very nice. Slightly wider stance. Back parallel with the ground if you can. If not, it's okay to be higher, but make sure that back is straight. As we turn, slight bend in the knees. Look past the heel, stretch for just a moment, and let the elasticity of that stretch carry you back across, turn, Stretch and back across. Again, slight bend in the knee. Once you hit that end point of the twist, stretch just a little and then back through.
Two more. Last one. Good, narrowing that stance up a little bit. Feet just a little bit wider than shoulder width. And hip circles, just like our first exercise, the first few, relaxing the weight around our base, making sure that we're not locking out the knees at any point in this movement. Once your hips and back feel comfortable with this, then you can add in the drop. Again, making sure the knee isn't locked out as I roll. Two more. Last one. Good, back to that more vertical stance. And again, gentle circles, feel out the movement. In this higher stance, make sure the knees aren't locking out because we definitely don't want them to lock out when we add more speed. Once the circle's feeling good, then you can add in the level drop. One more. Very good. Bringing the feet together, sinking down with the hands resting on the kneecaps. And as we roll in the beginning, we're gonna make a nice smooth circle with the legs. If you feel comfortable, you can make it a wider diameter circle, which will help the knees kind of stabilize through different angles. One more. Change directions. Rolling. One more. Back to the middle. Forward, open, and back. One more. Back to the middle. Back, around, and forward. Last one. Good, shaking out the legs. And let's do some hip circles. A timer reset. Okay, with the hands on the hips and the feet slightly wider than shoulder width, try sinking down just a little. We don't need to sink down into a deep, deep horse stance. All we wanna do is sink down enough we can feel that inguinal groove. Okay, again, if I'm too vertical, there's no change in angle here in the hips. As I sink down, I begin to feel this very slight shelf in that quad, in that inguinal area. And I want to maintain that shelf as I externally rotate my leg. Again, it can be a quite high stance, right? I want to make sure I can feel that roll in the hip, that opening and closing of that quad area. As I get more comfortable, stronger, and more flexible, I can begin to sink down deeper if I want. But again, it's not about a strength exercise yet. It's coordination in that hip. Good, relaxing that roll. And switching legs, same thing. Sink down just deep enough that you can feel that crease of the hip as part of your movement. Of course, if your knees or hips need a break, it's okay to stand back up for a little bit, but as you're able, try to return to that posture. As we progress to our figure eight, again, try to maintain that feeling of opening and closing in that inguinal, that quad. If you can maintain that with relative ease, start adding in those three basic postural elements, that foot grab. Try 
drawing up to belly, pulling towards the spine. And the raising of our head and neck towards the ceiling, raising from the back of the head, not from the chin. That way the spine's elongating. Notice how the movement becomes a little more intense to maintain that shelf-like feeling in the hips. So again, when you need breaks, it's always okay to straighten that stance up, take a break, and then sink back down in that more engaged posture as you feel ready. Good, take a moment next. Feel those clavicles knit together. As they do, you may feel the scapula, those flat bones in your back splay out slightly. That concavity in the front and convexing of the back gives more space to your heart to relax. This is really important because in the anatomy of Fali, we want the power to come from the foot, right? Raise up, pass through the opening, closing of the quad, round the dantian, then travel up and escape out without putting pressure on the heart along the way. So you want to make sure there's a little bit of space in the chest to give part of the heart that room. Good, returning to that higher stance. Take a moment to shake out the legs. And again, because we're going a little deeper today in that posture and that um, rotating work, hands back on the knees, close to five circles, right and left. Okay, again, and whatever size circle feels comfortable and helpful for your joints. Once you hit five, five in the other direction. I recommend the first couple circles always be a little bit slower and more gentle. Once you feel out how the knees are doing, you can make it a deeper, more stretchy circle. Good. And back to standing. You reset the timer again. All right, now for internal rotation. Same basic idea, right? We want to sink down such that we can feel the presence of that inguinal crease. First leg, internal rotation. Now you might find that if your stance is too narrow, you can't sink and rotate, and that's okay. Just widen your stance a little bit. Vice versa is also fine. Find the most comfortable stance to move out from. Find that circle, find that groove in the hips. Change legs. And if you have your fingers on that inguinal groove, you might feel a change in the tone of the musculature as you roll the hip around. It's good to take note of that. It can help you better feel what structures are involved in which phase of the rotation. Again, if you ever need a break, you can raise that stance up. Let your legs stretch for a moment, and then as you're ready, if you're ready, sink back down. I continue the movement. And then integrating the other leg. You can make a change to the width of the stance if you need to, but try to find a spot where you can easily roll from one leg to the next while maintaining that movement in the quad. Once it starts to feel smooth, we can begin adding in the three basic postural elements, starting with the feet, seeing how that foot grab helps to stabilize our rotation, taking pressure off the knees. Belly draw towards the spine. Head and neck raising upwards towards the ceiling. attention to the roll, paying attention to the space in the hips. As we then knit those clavicles together, splaying the scapula, creating room for the heart. And again, I'm not sure how it feels for all of you, but for me, when I bring in that clavicle knitting, it feels like it can breathe a little deeper, like a little more ease. Which is always a nice motivation to fall into that posture. 
If it's sinking enough, you can feel one hip roll open to close and the next hip roll open to close. That belly button draw to the spine, helps maintain that shelf from the hips. The body feels kind of like you're sitting on a stool, a very high stool, that has wheels on the bottom. You're just rolling that stool side to side. Good, returning to the middle. And relax. Get a quick sip of water, lose some Taiji ruler in just a moment. Nice, Laura. <laughs> Let's give Rachel a second to rejoin us and we will continue. What you got? Oh, there you go. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So once again, we want that stance depth, stance depth to be deep enough that we can feel that quad present, not so deep we feel that our knees, or ankles, or hips are in any kind of jeopardy. Whenever I go into any kind of feet to even stance in Northern Gong Fu, I want to make sure the feet are parallel. And it's parallel on the outside aspect, on the lateral aspect of the foot. And if you look at that, it may look like the feet are kind of chevroned in just a little bit, right? And that's okay because we want that turn in to stabilize us so we don't slip deeper and deeper in our stance the feet turned out. That little bit of turn in gives us the resistance to hold that stance. So again, the outside of the foot is parallel to the other outside of the foot. Sink just deep enough that you can feel that quad present. And we're going to begin with a backwards rolling. Take your time. Notice how I'm not completely straight with the roll, right? That's kind of uncomfortable for my wrists. I want maybe a five to 10 degree off center roll. That way there's space my belly, space my shoulders and hands. Take your time with that roll. Relax the shoulders once you get the basic rhythm of it. You want to feel the stick and your arms heavy. So heavy that the shoulders can't quite do the job of raising them by yourself. That's how you begin to build that body feel through the paraspinal muscles and into the belly. If I'm lifting with my shoulders, there's never any impetus to sink this movement deeper. If I relax the shoulders, keep the clavicles knit, and roll nice and slow, very rapidly I start to feel ribs, back, and stomach play a role in this movement. Take your time, like the palms are polishing, the end of the stick as you roll it side to side. Use that feeling in the quad to help you better access your belly. If you can feel your belly moving with the stick, try to imagine that you're leading the movement in the Taiji ruler from your Dantian. The Dantian's rolling, the arms are following. If you can't feel that yet, don't worry. That just takes time, right? If you can't feel it yet, focus on mechanics, focus on an even roll, focus on engaging your quad and those basic postural elements and things will begin to kind of naturally fall into place over time. Good, give the legs a little bit of a shake out. It's gonna be a fairly quad intensive class. If your legs need a break, it's always okay to go to a higher stance and it's always okay to shake it out for a moment or two. Good, next up is forward roll. So again, find your stance again once more. Lateral side of the feet are parallel with one another. Find a stance length that allows you to feel that inguinal groove present as you sink down just a little. And from here, begin to ascribe the circle of the forward roll. Once again, I'm not going for a perfectly vertical roll. 
I want that little bit of off-center turn so there's room for my joints to round comfortably and relax. That relaxation is key. If I'm tense in my shoulders, I'm going to be stuck in my shoulders. If I can relax and drop the shoulders, then I can begin to figure the other structures of a synergistic property in helping me to create this motion. Slow down a little. Feel the stick heavy. Feel the arms heavy. And then once both the ruler and the arms feel heavy, with the shoulders relaxed, those clavicles knit, scapula splayed, try to feel what other structures in your body are playing a role in this motion. Say you feel your back moving a little bit, that's great. If you feel your back moving a little, put all of your attention into where you're feeling that in your back. Most likely it'll start out as upper back, which is awesome. From there, try to bring that feeling lower and lower until you hit mid-thoracic. If you can, bridge that gap from thoracic over into lumbar. A nice trick for that little move is to draw the belly button to the spine so you can more easily integrate the back as one fluid structure. If you feel it in your ribs, make sure the roll has an amplitude sufficient that your ribs are rolling a little bit with the movement. From there, try to get it out of the upper ribs and again, allow that feel to kind of radiate down into the side body. If you're feeling it in your belly, try to feel the roll of the belly with the roll of the stick. Feel the different phases of body feel in the stomach as you roll. And then eventually try to feel like you're initiating from the stomach with that stomach initiation moving out towards the hands. Whenever you need a break, take a break, but keep that roll. And then find your hips again as you sink back down. And relax. Shake it out for a moment. Nicely done. Do two more sets, then a drink of water. Okay, next up, we're gonna roll side to side. So as you watch, I bring the stick around and then stretch, drawing back to the center. As I roll to the side, I fold, reach back to the center. As I fold, the hand in the direction I'm going comes underneath. That elbow then hinges and I reach to the side and this naturally uncoil back to the center. I'm going towards my right, so the right hand comes underneath. Right arm hinges out to the side and then unwinds back to the middle. I go to my left, the left hand comes underneath, left arm hinges and roll. Good, play with that movement just a couple times, move a little closer so it's easier to see. So I'm fully in frame, there we go. Hand hinges back, roll to the middle, left hand's underneath, left hand hinges out, back to the middle, roll to the center. Right hand under, right arm hinge, roll back to the center. Left arm under, left elbow hinges, back to the center. Good, before we go into our deeper stance, relax into this, try to find a smooth roll side to side. You can speed up a little and just try to make it a comfortable roll before we add in the secondary movements in the chest and back. Good, play with that a few more times at your own speed. Good, Rachel. Try to maintain more of a circle through the chest. That way it becomes a smoother roll, side to side. And since you have to watch me right now, watch the arms rolling the Taiji ruler, or in your case, the giant knife. There you go, feel more smooth? Very nice. Good, Laura. Take your time, Laura, from the center. I bring my arm under. I reach, 
There you go. And as the body twists back, the stick follows. Good. Next arm under. Very nice. Reach back around and in. Yeah, my rolling pin, pin is too small. <laughs> I realize it's too small. It's okay. It's okay. It's a good, you know, we don't all have ideal tools, but a rolling pin's a good start. Ideally, you want a thing that goes from tank fingertips to crook of the elbow. But even like, you know, a, a sawed down broom handle that you sand a little bit can be a fine substitute. It doesn't need to be, you know, a heavy or nice tool. It just needs to be an instrument you can use. Um, my buddy, um, Sonny, who trained nine years in Beijing, is still sort of a guy who had essentially a very nicely carved, about $1,500 equivalent stick that hung on his wall and had $1 worth of skill. So it's much better to have a $1 stick and $1,000 worth of skill than a $1,000 stick and $1 worth of skill. So again, a sawed off broom handle is a fine way to go. Good pan. So we're here. That was great, very good. So watch me, we'll go together. And I'll call it the opposite sides of easier trace. As I fold, my right arm comes underneath. Good. And then the right arm reaches out. Very nice. Fold. Switch. Left arm comes underneath. Good. Left arm reaches. Very good. So see how my hand is resting on the outside of my arm as I reach to the side? That way I can create the circle more smoothly as I come in. Good. Rolling back to the center. Back to open. Very nice. Right hand comes underneath. Good. Right hand reaches. But see my left arm is still on that outside. Rolling back to center. Left hand comes underneath. Left hand reaches. Go to that right arm, see up and over as I reach. Very nice, a couple more on your own. Good. There you go, very nice, good. And as I reach the side, I'm pulling the stick on the outside of my elbow so I can stretch that arm wide. There, very good. Back to the front, stick is on the outside of my arm and it's gonna stay on the outside of my arm as I turn. That's it, you got it now. Very good, Pam, very good. And back to the center. And Craig, let's take a look. Sweet. Make sure, Craig, that you're keeping that chest round and that belly round so you can feel that, there you go, that movement come from your center. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about what else is happening as we engage in this motion. The arm coordination, I think, is the trickiest part, and you're all doing a very nice job of that. You just kind of play with this on your own time. It's a nice way of building coordination. It's great for joint lock drills and just for, you know, general dexterity, but for the Tai Chi purposes, as we roll, we don't just want to roll our shoulders, right? We want to roll our whole structure. We want the quad involved as well. If I'm here in vertical, I've essentially cut off everything from my ribs down. So my yao isn't being used, my quad isn't being used, my legs are barely being used. If I sink down just a little, I can feel that inguinal, that quad at work. I can roll my yao, that space between my lower ribs and the top of my hips, and I want to make sure I'm using both. So as I roll, it's not just the shoulders, it's the belly pulling as I wrap, and then I stretch the belly to the side. You see how I have that little bit of rotation, I can feel my lumbar turn, my spine actually pops a little bit, which feels great. I roll back to the middle, keeping that space in the stomach, round from the belly, turn that yao, turn that midsection to the side, roll back to the stomach, feeling my belly articulating, in each pass, I want to slow it down, like I'm winding up a rubber band in my stomach, and then stretching that rubber band ever so gently to the side, unwind that rubber band in my stomach, and wind again in the other direction, playing that feeling of elasticity. As always, moving from the Dantian is our lofty goal. If you're not doing that yet, that is fine. Instead, try to feel that sink in the hips, that draw the belly button towards the spine, the knitting of those clavicles, and as those postural elements come into place, it becomes easier and easier to begin to feel the start of a Dantian movement, and then ultimately to initiate the pull from the belly and feel that stretch through the belly as we roll side to side. It's also quite helpful to watch the most extended arm as we turn back to neutral, and now I'm watching my left arm as it passes to the outside, Back to neutral, watching the right arm as it stretches to the outside. It doesn't need to be a big dig, a big sink. 
just enough that you can feel that inguinal space slightly active. Keep playing. How's that feeling, Rachel? It's looking good. Looking good. You are doing great work with that rolling pin, Laura. That's awesome. Very nice. Good hip movement. Very good structure in the upper legs. There you go, Craig. Make sure your feet are always pulling from the ground so you can keep that draw through your lower leg and not lose control of your upper leg. There you go. Good, good. That base is so important. And like you're doing right now, you want to keep it supple and flexible. That way, everything above it can mimic that same quality of movement. Very nice, Pam. I can begin to see that quad starting to move as you roll. That's wonderful. I like the pace you're playing with. Keep practicing like this, you're gonna make wonderful progress very quickly. One little thing, make sure your feet are still parallel on those lateral aspects so you can better feel the hips and not put too much pressure on your knees. We have just a few more seconds of this and we'll transition to our next movement. All right, everyone relax for a second. As you take a break, watch me. So our next movement is a roll to draw, roll to draw. Same roll in the stomach, dropping into our side pocket. Roll, draw, hinge, roll, hinge, draw, hinge, roll. And go roll nice and slow. Back to neutral, back to the middle. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna count opposite. So this, I'll be calling this my right hand for everyone's help, for everyone's sake. I bring my right hand under, and my right hand sinks into my right pocket. Right arm comes up, rolling back to neutral. Left hand comes under, left hand sinks into my left pocket. Left hand raises, roll, right hand is now under again sink into the right pocket, raise as we roll, hinge as we sink, raise as we roll, hinging as we sink. So we're trying to remove any delineation of hinge to drop. We want to see one smooth movement as with the return to neutral. Around to sink, drawing up, Round to sink. Good, taking your time. I'll go, I'll go nice and slow. Right hand under, right hand sink. Raising as we roll. Left hand under, left hand sink. Raising as we roll. Right hand under, right hand sink. Raise to roll. Left hand under, left hand sink. Very good. This movement just shattered my poor dyslexic brain when I first learned it, but it's become an old friend since. Good. A few more with me, nice and slow. I'll give all of you a chance to play with this and get more comfortable with it before we add in the subsequent body movements. Okay, and a few more. Good, Laura. Back to neutral, Laura. Back to here. And I'll call it mirror towards you. So the right hand comes underneath. Right hand sinks. Good. Right hand lifts. Turn, left hand under, left hand sink. Good, back to up, back to neutral. Very nice, right hand under, there you go, right hand sink. 
Oh, the right? That's it, good, that's what got me too. Hands raise, back around, left hand under, left hand sink. Good, raising, turning, one last time together, right hand under, right hand sink. That's it, and back to neutral and carry on. Very good, very nice work. Good, Rachel. Good, Pam. Very nice, Craig. Okay. Is everyone feeling decently comfortable with the pattern of this one? Yeah? Cool. Let's add in the rest of it. So the basic elements are identical to the previous couple of movements, right? We still want our feet to parallel. We still want to feel that quad angular groove. And ideally, we want the movement to ultimately arrive from the stomach first. As we get into that, let's play with that sink as the first move we're adding in. Watching me, as I roll, there's a little bit of a body sink. You see that as I drop down? A little bit of a raise as I roll around. A little bit of a sink as I drop, raising from the hips as I go into my circle. Sink, raise, sink, raise. Also notice how because my legs are further apart now, I'm dropping right in line with that inguinal groove, right? Not to the outside of my leg, right to the inside of my leg. As I come back around, sink. Draw back around, sink. Also notice how I'm keeping my back straight. As I sink down, I'm not bringing my butt out and leaning forward. I want to feel those quads work. I want to feel that inguinal groove active as part of this process. As part of this process. Roll, sink roll, sink. If your knees and hips are bugging you, you can do this from quite high of stance, right? You can be right here and still have a little bit of a drop each time you roll by and that will still give you some benefit. It still builds the exact same coordination. As your strength and flexibility improves, then you can add in a bit more of, you know, aggressive posture with the movement. So let's play with that roll to sink, roll to sink a few times. Hand sinks as the hip sinks, hand raises following the hips. If you want to play with some folly basic patterning, inhale on the roll, exhale to the drop. Good, and then from there, let's slow it down just a little bit. Make sure that belly button is drawn to the spine. Those feet are grabbing the ground. Make sure those clavicles are knit, scapula splayed, so we can begin to feel the arms heavy with this movement. So heavy that we can't raise back up from the shoulders, we have to raise back up from that middle. And again, that middle movement right now is initiated from that rise and fall in the quad, that inguinal space. Keeping those arms heavy. If you can also identify something of a roll in your paraspinal muscles, awesome. That can absolutely be there. Also easier to feel if those clavicles are knit and those scapula splayed. From there, try to feel that belly more pronounced. Condensing as we sink, expanding as we lift, condensing as we sink, expanding as we lift. Go ahead and continue at your own pace for a few moments. Nice pace, Laura. Very good, Laura. As you roll, make sure the stick is on the inside of your hip. See, it's a little bit of the side of my hip. So I don't want it out here, right there. That way I can keep it more in line with my shoulders. As I draw through, if it stays in line with my shoulders, it's easier to feel this movement reflected in other structures in my body. If I reach too far to the side, I lose that coordination and that accessibility to my paraspinal muscles. Very good, very good. Good, Pam. 
Make sure those feet turn just a little bit, Pam. A little bit of, of foot turn in. There you go. Good, good. Awesome. How's that feeling, Craig? <clears throat> good. Very nice, Rachel. Keep space in those shoulders. There's a temptation to collapse them at times. Make sure when you want to collapse, you just add a little bit more room. If you add more room, you'll find where in the rest of the body you can find that elasticity to take up the slack that would be the collapse in your arms. Does that make sense? There you go. Yeah. See, now your shoulders aren't rising and falling. They're moving in sync with your hips, which is where you want. Remember, shoulders and hips always want to move together. There. And see, now the stick is closer to your center line because you're containing it with your arms more efficiently. Very nice. Good, a few more moments of this and we'll take a nice little break. All right, everybody shake it out for a moment, grab some water, do some knee circles if you feel the need. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just a request, I would love to have this class. If you did record, if you didn't, don't worry about it, but I would love this to have this with the Tai Chi stick. Totally, totally. It's been recording. Um, there's been just kid chaos in my house the last few days. I'm gonna to try to get more things online in the very near future. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've been meaning to. Um, we also had our best computer implode on us a few days ago, so I need to figure out how to <laughs> roll everything else through, but it'll, it'll come. Hi, Tara. So any questions about the function of qua in fundamental movements or any specifics about the roles we just played with? Cool, it's looking really good. Taiji ruler is just a fantastic tool. When you move your hands in space, um, you might get it right, you might get it wrong, it might be consistent, right? I love it too. <laughs> but the great thing about having you know, the ruler is that it really forces consistency, especially in the early phases of playing this kind of movement. And then when you omit the ruler, that muscle memory is there and everything kind of pops into place that much easier. It's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely step on the way. Are anyone's knees bugging them so far? Rachel's? <laughs> okay. So. It's not too bad. Okay. But my right knee is still bugging me a bit. Is it moving in a good direction or a bad direction? A good direction. Sweet. It's getting better. Good. So we're going to do some standing for a few minutes next. All right. Okay. Cool. And I would recommend. But my hip isn't bugging me at all right this second. Capoeira is really good for hips. You do it gently. Um, but for this it also has what popped my hip out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the stronger they'll happen, less and less. Yeah. It'll stay well efficiently and your flex and the elastic in your body won't you know, move things around quite so much. The stability will come. So we're gonna do some standing work next. For you, Rachel, your knees are bugging you. Even if you don't feel a need to stretch your legs out, please do periodically. Okay? So every so often just kind of straighten your legs and you shake the leg out, that's okay. Make sure you're not putting too much pressure on it. All right. Standing is a thing that I really like to be, you know, with the person. I do some hands-on work, but I'll do my best over Zoom to make the corrections that I can. Okay, so let's find the viewfinder down just a little bit. Timer set. Okay, so what we want to do is start with the feet together. We're going to go through our stepping out process. Our stepping out process, we're then going to sink into our standing energy. It's beginning, feet together. Let the body rock forward and back. It's got a lot of leg work, so use this opportunity to kind of feel where your legs are, how they're doing. And just as I mentioned to my little sister, if any of you feel like your knees are getting tired, please, please, please shake it out periodically. 
it's much better to be safe to be safe, especially if you begin to work on that lower stance kind of side of Tai Chi. Find the middle and relax the weight down. Begin with the head and neck. On your next exhalation, try to feel the weight carried in your head and neck drop into your chest and upper back. After you drop into the chest and back, take a moment and just kind of feel the change in how your body is holding itself. A couple breaths later, try to let the weight that's now in your chest and upper back sink into your belly. Again, on an exhalation. Now your bellies are nice and heavy. Once more, take a moment to see how standing has changed. From belly to that big basket of your hips. Hips to the large muscles of the upper leg. Upper leg into the lower leg, both the gastroc, the bulgy muscle in the back of your leg, the calf, and also the tibialis anterior, this muscle right through here on the front of your leg. And then from the lower leg, finally dropping into your feet. And this may not feel so remarkable on flat ground, but when you go through this process outside, where there's you know, roots and subtle contours, you can really feel your feet start to display and relax as all of that weight sinks in, allowing all those little bones. Again, there are 26 bones in your ankle, but there's a high, high density of just movable structures as they begin to splay and relax and settle into the ground. Take a few seconds to play with that sink. Now we're going to reestablish our posture starting with the feet. So as we engage the feet, we're focusing mostly on the first two toes, the big thumb-like toe and the second toe immediately next to it. As those toes pull in just a little, you may feel your arch become a little more pronounced. And as it does, the weight in the foot will begin to settle and splay out towards the little toe. Once again, take a couple of breaths to see how adding in that foot grab has changed your stability and changes the feel of standing. From there, umbilicus draws towards the spine. It may cause a very slight forward shift, not so much the tailbone tucks at all, but just enough that you can feel those muscles in the middle act in support and in balance to the very large muscles in your back. Remember, in Gong Fu and Chinese medicine, the front of the body is yin, the back of the body is yang. The yin is the structure that supports the movement through the yang. If the belly isn't there engaged, the yang has nothing to tether it to and lacks focus. As we continue upwards, those clavicles knit, scapula splay, once more giving space to our heart, which is so important if any power and force comes through us. And lastly, that raising of the head and neck from the back of the skull, completing that ridge of earth, grabbing with the feet, person in the middle, head and neck reaching towards the skies or heavens, that classic martial arts adage of earth, person, heaven. From here, we step out. We begin by weighting our right leg. To bring the weight over, we lift up, out with our left, pull the weight transverse across the middle, and then press into the right, not collapsing. It's an active press down and an active raise up. That gives a suspension, and you can do a lot of movement if you have a stable, suspended post to move around. And that's what we're creating here on our right side. Next, we want to lift our left leg. We want to lift it from the hip. And so for a couple of moments, take that right shoulder, pivot it down a little, Imagine there's a rope tethering your left inguinal to the inside of your right shoulder. 
As you raise that right shoulder back, feel the leg lift from that hip, and then settle back down as the shoulder comes forward. Just feel that connection cross body. And as you play with this movement, you may begin to feel the abdominal muscles work and move in response to the shoulder hip movement. Pay attention to that. We're gonna use that for the lift in just a moment. And one more. The foot settles, the back posture returns to stable. And with that feeling of belly movement in mind, raise the hip, this time from the stomach. Good, as we raise up, feel that Dantian roll as you draw up, around into those paraspinal muscles. And as we sink in the back of those glutes and the hamstring, that's when you see my leg sinks ever so slightly with that press down. Because this is a stable pose, that's why I'm able to shift back and forth without losing my balance, because I have that stable pull that I'm rotating around. As I step out to the side, rolling from the belly, that raised leg reaches, rips the ground, pulls my weight under the ground, under the floorboards, and brings my feet to a relaxed neutral. Once here, take a moment, make sure your feet are in parallel, your toes are the same level. There's that gentle foot grab, belly draw, clavicle knit, and head and neck raise. On the next exhale, we're gonna sink down. But as we do, we want to feel like there's a suspension coil in the back, right through those paraspinals, and as we stretch down gently through the back, that dropping through the paraspinals allows the arms to lift. Okay, so again, as we sink down in the exhalation, feel that stretching down the back as the arms raise up. Focus that sink once again on that inguinal groove. Feel like you're sitting on that high stool. Slight crease in the hips, drawing with the belly, knitting of the clavicles, raising of the head neck, and of course, active feet beneath you. As I hold the stance, see how of the joints of my arm, the elbows are the lowest. It's like there's a little weight hanging right from the tip of my elbow, right from that olecranon, pulling down ever so slightly. Our arms almost want to do this, and to stop them from sinking in, I have to maintain that feeling of an egg in my arm, but this elastic structure that as I press into it has a recoil that pushes the arms back out. That recoil gives space in my back, brings my lats into the game, and allows me to get to begin to access my ribs. So again, as I draw in, there becomes an increased feeling of stretch and round. There's life in the fingertips. They're gently stretching towards each other, but they're not taut, right? There's a very gentle pull, very gentle draw all the way through the wrist as I stretch hand to hand. Good. The hands can be at chest level. The hands can be at belly level, they can be in between, they can be wherever they need to be to help you to kind of find and identify what parts of your body you're trying to open. I prefer to be at about chest level, because I like having that added weight, in part because I've got a fair bit of muscle, that weight sort of helps me get past my own build and deeper into my structures. If you have a slider build, it can be really nice to drop the hands down a little bit, because they can play that more subtle connection between the Dantian and Lao Gong, the point of the palm of the hands. There's really no right answers wherever you feel like working today. Good. Continue holding for a few more breaths. Good. Slight stretch in the fingertips, Rachel. There you go. Good base, Laura. Very nice. Every so often, check your belly button, Laura, and make sure you have that very little bit of engagement, keeping the stomach in line. Very, very good, Pam. Nice, relaxed arms. Playing with the weight of the arms and playing with that elasticity as they press on that egg in the armpit. And see how there's that press down and the elasticity of that press creates this little bit more round. Sink to round. Good, very good. And very nice, Craig. Making sure that as you relax, you keep space, especially on the inside of the shoulder right here. So you can feel that stretch from the palms 
kind of playing off the pressure towards your chest. Good, good. Good, Rachel, shake out the knee whenever you need to. Okay. Gently raising. Feeling that cross body pull as we lift. Bringing the feet together. Exhaling as the hands drop. Inhaling as we gather and pull towards the stomach. For more masculine yang energy, it's right hand over left. For more feminine yin energy, it's left hand over right. Um, whatever feels correct to you is exactly where you should be. And from here, three rollings of the Dantian. One direction. Other direction. And relaxing down. Very nice work, all of you.